his advisors. He became the point man of the communists. He wrote Mao, Tibet is with you. Nine months later, a unit of the People's Army took up residence in Lhasa. There were 20,000 soldiers for 50,000 Tibetans. The seizures, punishments and famine began. Nothing would ever be the same. Propaganda showed off Tibet as free and Chinese, a nation among others in the large family of Greater China. The first meeting between a political official and the Dalai Lama, who had returned to Lhasa, was filmed for propaganda purposes. In Beijing, emissaries of the Tibetan government signed under pressure a 17-point accord that the Chinese then ratified with a false Dalai Lama stamp. The accord called for the maintaining of Tibetan cultural and religious identity. Independence was gone, but the authority of the Dalai Lama was carried on. The Panchen Lama discovered the new rituals. The unending speeches and propaganda. And all the constraints that came with collaboration. War was on in Korea. Tibet was not a hot spot in the Cold War. Abandoned by India and the Western powers, Tibet did the best it could with the so-called peaceful liberation by China. The illusion did not last long. Two years later, the Chinese forced the Dalai Lama to send away his main ministers and advisors. He assumed sole responsibility for the government, by now an isolated body, along with the Panchen Lama and the Chinese political officers. The Panchen Lama came to Lhasa for the first time and finally met the Dalai Lama. They were 17 and 16 years old. Invited by Mao to visit Beijing, the Dalai Lama left Lhasa on July 11, 1954, though the people begged him not to go. They were afraid he would never be able to return. It was the first time he had left Tibet. The voyage was a long one, more than 5,000 kilometers. Arrival at the Chinese border.
the Dalai Lama took the train for the first time. The delegation visited the forbidden city. The Dalai Lama and the Panchen Lama met with Mao several times and celebrated their 20th birthdays in Beijing. In spite of the polite appearances, pressure was being put on the guests. Pressure about the gifts of communism. Mao personally told the Dalai Lama about the reform measures to rule over Tibet, including a preparatory committee. And there were deputies in the National Assembly. The Dalai Lama said his goodbyes to the Panchen Lama and left Beijing after spending almost one year there. With no news, Lhasa thought he had been taken prisoner. But his return in a jeep with no ceremony showed off the real reason for the journey, to turn the God King into an ordinary Chinese civil servant. The Panchen Lama, wearing a suit, was kept like a hostage in Beijing. Then came the next stage of the Chinese plan, the conquest of the House of Riches of the West, the Chinese name for Tibet. First came strategic routes up to the border with India, 2,500 kilometers of new roads. It was rough going to bring the modern world to this difficult environment. The walls of the Tibetan fortress were opened ending the protection offered by the highest mountains in the world. The east was red, and the sun was rising. Mao brought electricity 